Okay. Sheldon Adelson. Sheldon Adelson, Sheldon Adelson. You keep hearing his name popping up left and right when it comes to these marijuana uh, killing commercials, uh, these anti-marijuana efforts uh, around the country to put out this propaganda that marijuana <clears throat> is, is bad and we shouldn't legalize it for recreational, for medical. We should look at states like Colorado and see all the bad things that happen because of this. All right, well, Keith Straub, who is, uh, you know, of course, he is a uh, founder of Normal. Um, he he's also a political activist and he's a public interest attorney and he wrote a little hit piece on Sheldon Adelson well I don't know you know maybe Sheldon Adelson don't consider it a hit piece more like a resume but to me it's just dirty dirt and there's a lot of it so uh, ATTN is where this was published <clears throat> Uh, I think I'm just going to give this the word for word because it's really good. Um, and I actually just wanted to put a bunch of pictures of Sheldon Adelson on here while I was talking. Maybe I'll still do some of that um, later on in the uh, edit process. But who knows? We'll see. So let's just go. Uh, who is the who is this anti-marijuana backer Sheldon Adelson? I am writing today about a somewhat mysterious man who has spent tens of millions of dollars to try to prop up marijuana prohibition. In fact, he has become the big fish in anti-marijuana funding in the anti-marijuana funding world. His name is Sheldon Adelson. He is an 82-year-old Las Vegas casino owner. He owns the Sands, the Venetian, and the Palazzo. Uh, he is reportedly worth $29 billion, making him the 12th richest man in America. Adelson once made uh, the late website Gawker's billionaire shit list which called him evil for spending uh, hundreds of millions of dollars trying to get extreme right-wingers into office. <clears throat> he should be on our shit list as well for spending funds on prohibition, which as a policy has resulted in the needless arrest of more than 26 million Americans over the last 40 years. Adelson was also the principal financial backer of Freedom Watch, a now defunct political advocacy group funded uh, founded to counter the influence of the billionaire George Soros, who is the largest pro-legalization funder in the country, and liberal groups such as MoveOn.org. Freedom Watch spent over $30 million of Adelson's money in 2008 before fading into oblivion. In 2014, Adelson gave $5.5 million to the drug-free Florida campaign to help defeat medical, uh, the medical use initiative and has given another $1.5 million to fight the pending medical use initiative this year, with more likely to follow. He has also just donated $1 million to the group opposing the legalization initiative on the ballot in Massachusetts. <clears throat> you might remember those commercials. All right, in uh, his home state of Nevada. Now, in another video, I might have said that he didn't spend, he hasn't been out in Nevada fighting it because they're probably going to be selling weed in, in their casinos that he owns, so, you know, it's a win-win whether it passes or not. I, don't know, I still don't know why this guy's for um, prohibition, but <clears throat> we're about to take a guess. So in his home state of Nevada, where a full legalization initiative is on the ballot for this up-and-coming election, Adelson has donated $2 million to oppose the initiative. He recently purchased the Las Vegas Review Journal for $140 million, and since then the paper withdrew its prior endorsement of marijuana legalization for the state, of course. One cannot help but to wonder what would mo motivate an individual who would want to continue a failed public policy that results in the needless arrest of so many of our fellow citizens. In Adelson's case, it was apparently a personal family tragedy. His 48-year-old son, Mitchell, died in 2005 of a drug overdose involving cocaine and heroin. Another son, Gary, has also struggled with drug addiction and is allegedly estranged from his father altogether. Adelson has said he sees marijuana as a gateway drug that led to his son's problems. And by sons, uh, it, it says plural there. <sighs> gateway theory, huh? <clears throat> so this gateway theory has been, long since been refuted by serious scientists, including the National Academy of Sciences Institute of Medicine, 
quote, there is no such, there, there is no conclusive evidence that the drug effects of marijuana are casually, causally linked to the subsequent abuse of other drugs. And the RAND, Corpor the Rand Corporation, which is a far right-wing think tank, um, they say, well, uh, while the gateway theory has enjoyed popular acceptance, scientists have always had their doubts. Our study shows that these doubts are justified. Let's not forget the FDA's letter to the DEA just recently telling them not to <clears throat> uh, take marijuana out of the Schedule One designation because they don't believe it has a medicinal values to it. But even they, in their findings and in, of all the research that they looked at, even they um, confirm that they don't believe this gateway theory and that you know they don't see anything that holds the gateway theory to be uh, credible. So and then in the Netherlands, there's the Netherlands Institute of Mental Health and Addiction, which recently reached this same conclusion. Quote, as far as... Uh, as, as for a possible switch from cannabis to hard drugs, it is clear that the pharmacological properties of cannabis are irrelevant in this respect. There is no physically determined tendency towards switching from marijuana to harder substances. Social factors, however, do appear to play a role. The more users become integrated in an environment or subculture where, apart from cannabis, hard drugs are, uh, can also be obtained, there's a greater chance that they may switch to hard drugs. So a separation of drug markets is therefore essential, end of quote. In addition, those drug users who do end up using heroin or other far more dangerous drugs seldom start with marijuana. Rather, recent research shows it is alcohol that is the first drug used in a string of drugs, leading to an eventual addiction, not marijuana. And, uh, one can surely sympathize with the sense of loss any parent for any parent who experiences the death of a child, regardless of the cause. But these and other scientific findings suggest that if more uh, jurisdictions legalize and regulate marijuana in a manner similar to alcohol, thereby allowing its sale to be governed by licensed state-authorized distributors rather than by criminal entrepreneurs and pushers of various other hard drugs, even fewer marijuana users will progress to other illicit drugs. One can surely sympathize with the sense of loss for any parent who experiences the death of a child, regardless of the cause. But that does not justify treating millions of other Americans as criminals. All right, and then he moves on to talk about Patrick Kennedy, because I guess uh, in some ways it reminds one of former Democratic Representative Patrick Kennedy, the youngest son of longtime Senator Ted Kennedy, Democrat from Massachusetts. Patrick Kennedy became addicted to pharmaceutical opioids, uh, alcohol, and other illegal drugs before finally embarrassing himself and the Congress uh, when he was arrested in 2006 after crashing his car into a barricade on Capitol Hill. At the time, he was high on OxyContin and drunk from alcohol. In Patrick Kennedy's own words, OxyContin was what I uh, used for years, but... I'm an addict, so it doesn't matter what it is. I use benzodiazepines, alcohol, stimulants, Adderall, cocaine, and you name it. Um, I didn't hear marijuana in there. Matter of fact, Patrick Kennedy's never said anything about ever smoking marijuana, so it wasn't a, even a gateway for him. In 2009, Kennedy again checked himself into a drug rehab program. Kennedy then co-founded Project SAM, a sensible approach to marijuana, the principal anti-marijuana organization working in the country to maintain marijuana prohibition. Uh, he's seldomly out there doing work for Sam these days. It's all uh, his partner, um, and we'll talk more about him in other videos, but Sam is a total sham. Um, anyway, so while the strategy may be therapeutically useful for the hopefully recovering addict, it places the burden of his problems unfairly on the rest of us. In fact, recent studies shown that in states in which medical marijuana have been legalized, the use of opiates uh, has significantly declined. It is uh, a sad reflection on these two individuals that they use their wealth and fame to punish the rest of us by working to slow the inevitable end of marijuana prohibition. About 60% of Americans now support marijuana legalization despite the efforts of Adelson and Patrick Kennedy to try to defend prohibition. Nonetheless, there is naturally some, uh, some concern that this influx of big money might sway 
a sufficient number of voters to defeat some of the pending legalization initiatives. The defeat of the medical use initiative in Florida in 2014 had 58%, but it needed 60 because it was a constitutional amendment. Uh, is attributed by many observers to be out-of-state funding from Sheldon Adelson. In the end, our nation's marijuana policy must be based on science and common sense, not on the tragic examples of those who are unable to control their addictions. I'm confident the pro-legalization forces, with our positive message of the benefits to society from legalization, will carry the day and that we will both outraise funds and outspend our opponents in these up-and-coming uh, voter initiative campaigns. Not this year, but, as f but for as long as it takes to finally end marijuana prohibition. And again, Keith Straub is a Washington, D.C. public interest attorney who found a normal in 1970. Um, he, you know, <clears throat> I can't really add much to it. He pretty much nailed it. Uh, Adelson, as you've heard me talk about in many other videos, because I've been following the money and I've been checking these Reefer Madness commercials and criticizing them as they do deserve the criticism. There's absolutely no cause for some of the Reefer Madness. The bullet points of the Reefer Madness that they're pumping is that there's going to be pot shops everywhere, that the deaths from driving on marijuana are off the charts, um, little kids are buying medibles and they don't know the difference between regular candy and medible candy. Uh, you name it, man. It's just the, the propaganda of teen suicide, yeah. There's people out there saying that people are uh, committing suicide after eating brownies, or maybe it was like they thought they could fly, or they just, you know, couldn't take, they couldn't hack it anymore, and the marijuana brownie is what pushed them over the edge. <clears throat> Adelson's behind it. It's dirty, dark money. He's behind a lot of these... Um, unbelievable uh, claims about marijuana and they are in the form of commercials and unfortunately since he's got a lot of money to burn if you live in one of those states that are legalizing recreational or medicinal marijuana you're gonna have to put up with a lot of these commercials and you know good thing is, is you don't have to look at Sheldon Adelson while you're watching these commercials